Whizcraft. Another cast of five aircraft to get you on your toes and test your powers of identification. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Here they are, then. And you ought to know them all by now. But in case you don't, let's take them singly. Not so singly at that. Here's our first, over the desert where she made her name. Well, what is her name? That's long enough even for the dullest, but we'll give you the answer. Long glazed nose, step up to fuselage, to tailplane too, and large rounded fin and rudder spell Maryland a name which reveals her American origin. But it's over the western desert and in British colors that the Maryland has achieved her greatest glory. Ask anyone who fought out there. Anyone on our side, I mean. A speedy reconnaissance bomber, she's been raining down destruction on Hun and Wop with equal generosity. in mortal combat. What are they? The one with pointed wingtips is a spit, but what's the other? Well, if you take that long, you won't live to tell us. It's a Messerschmitt 109E, recognizable at once by the long, slender fuselage and squared-off wingtips three radiators, and a braced tailplane. Germany's standard single-seat fighter for the first two years of the war, the 109E has been found wherever the Hun has ravaged and destroyed. Poland, Holland, Belgium, Greece and Crete know her only too well. Escorting German bombers was her job in those days, but over Britain, Russia, and in the Western Desert, she has met her match. You must have seen her over England, all over England, in ditches, hedges, fields, and scrap heaps, too. And now for number three. So easy, full of character and typically British, you must know her at once. Here you are then. Short Sunderland stops to show you a deep hull armed with three power-operated gun turrets. The hull divided into three equal parts by these steps. Four radials and that high fin and rudder. Incidentally, this earlier model of the Sunderland has only two turrets. Long-range reconnaissance and convoy escort are her normal roles. Many a Hun submarine crew have seen her, if only they'd lived to describe it. Off Greece, this battleship of sky and sea appeared in a new role, evacuating troops. Eighty-seven men on one trip, including around half-dozen in the lavatory. for our fourth, silhouetted against the sky. 
slab-like wings, twin tails, and slab-like fuselage, too. It's too easy, so let's bring it to a halt and summarize. In a nutshell, just one mass of rectangles, and it's a Whitley. The Whitley has long been famous for her trips to Europe, first distributing pamphlets, then unloading more solid education for the Bosch. Now she's been adapted to carry their education a step further. We're sending professors now. Finally, watch this roaring in at us. Yes, those engines are part of a Sterling, but it's the planes in the background we're concerned with. High tail fin, Wellington, wing plan it might be. What about those engines? It's so difficult to tell when they're moving. Thanks. Two underslung engines breaking a trailing edge which has sharp taper and a tailplane with dihedral. Boston she is. But which mark? Tails up in flight. That might be any of them. But the size of the fin and rudder make it certain that this is a Boston Mark III. These Douglas aircraft, Boston's by day and Havocs at night, were among the pioneers of the tricycle undercarriage. Against the stealthy night raider, Havocs have lived up to their name, and by day, the speed and bomb load of the Boston have had a great influence on factory unemployment in occupied France. Curtain call to the Maryland, the Messerschmitt 109E, the Short Sunderland, the Whitley, and the Douglas Boston.